quick overview of TempDB, and this should be no surprise. I, this isn't like a, oh my goodness, um, well, I, I learned that. Hopefully you guys know what I'm about to <laughs> cover here in, in this slide, right? So uh, TempDB is a, a, a global resource, right? It's used by the instance. It's not database specific. It is used by the instance. It's a system database, right? So when you install SQL Server, you get TempDB. Um, and we'll talk about later at the, at the end of this kind of best practice about, you know, how many files you need to have provision and things like that, right? But this is a system database. Get it when you install SQL Server. And it is used uh, for a number of things, and we'll get into that. But primarily, it's used for temporary user options, right? When I create a temp table or a table variable, things like that, yeah, those are stored in TempDB. Um, uh uh, it also has internal objects and things like work tables, right? Work tables are, we'll call uh, intermediate. These are things are, work tables are used to store intermediate uh, results for things like cursors, spools, uh, large objects. Um, whenever you do a, have a pretty complex query, uh, the work you've got like the work files for hash joins, uh, and aggregate uh, aggregate operations, things like that, right? These are the internal tables that you have no access to, but they're used by the SQL Server engine for that. Um, it's also used for um, when you do the internal tables for like uh, rebuilding indexes, right? So when you do like um, sort in TempDB, when you rebuild an index, you know, those are work tables are used for, for that to like the sort, sort the index, you sort the data when you rebuild an index. Um, version store, we are going to talk about the version store. You saw that in the agenda. We're going to talk about version store. So think concurrency. We'll talk about that. Like things like, uh, recommitted snap site, snapshot isolation, right? So the version store is a heavy user of TempDB. We will talk about that. Um, TempDB is minimally, minimally logged, meaning, so it's not like a, user database where uh, you know all the transactions are kept in the log file tempdb is minimally logged and it's built that way so that transactions are minimally logged so that um those transactions can be quickly rolled back if needed right so it, that's why we would call it minimally logged um it is recreated and you guys should know this it is recreated each time sql server is restarted this is because um the system always, when you restart, the SQL Server always wants you to start with a clean, fresh slate in TempDB, right? A fresh copy of that database. So there's no residual or leftover components. So when you restart, it's recreated every time. Just so you're starting with a, a very clean slate, right? Uh, and one of the things that we do want to highlight here is that nothing is persisted from one SQL Server session to another, right? So um, this is kind of important to understand. We'll s sort of see this in the in the demos, right? But at a high level, this should not be new for anybody. This is TempDB um, at its finest, right? So, uh, if you have any questions? Let us know. Right? So, hopefully, this all makes sense. All right, let's talk about TempDB consumers because because I think what we see at a high level, people are like, okay. Well, I know if I create a temp table in tempdb, you know, a temp table, it goes there. If I create a table variable, it goes there. But we need to understand what really uses tempdb because that has an overall performance impact on how we use and understand and think about tempdb, right? So there are several, quite a few consumers of tempdb. And obviously, you know, the obvious ones are temporary tables, you know, create temp table, whatever. That goes in TempDB, obviously. Uh, if I create a terrible table variable, that goes in TempDB, right? If we um, uh, if we talk about like a table, let's go back to the table. Like things like um, cursors will all can also use TempDB, right? So um, it's kind of like so if you think about kind of like a cursor, like a temp table, it depends on the options in your cursor, but a cursor can use TempDB, like it can spill data to TempDB, right? So it just depends on how you're using a cursor, but, you know, uh, that'll use a table, you know, that'll use some of the work tables and things like that, right? Uh, work tables for sorting, you know, that uses TempDB as well. Um, we've talked about this earlier uh, when you're doing uh, like an index rebuilding, things like that, and it has to do all the sorting. That's going to use TempDB. 
um, uh, it sort of, you know, like it'll build a, a temp table behind the scenes to, you know, to sort the data. So that's uh, good to know, right? Uh, oh, I talked about cursors. Yeah, cursor, you know, that's kind of like a temp table, depending on what your cursor is doing, you know, that's going to use temp DB. Uh, talked about index builds, that's going to use temp DB. And obviously, like I mentioned earlier, your version store. And a lot of people don't understand how version store works and that it's using temp DB. It's starting in 2019, and I'll bring this up later. You can actually put the version store in your user database, and that's you know that's not really recommended, right? We'll but we'll talk about that, right? But the version store is one of the probably the biggest consumers of TempDB next to your temporary tables. So depending on how many temporary tables you're doing, right, the version store is right up there next to temporary tables and table variables. Right? It is a heavy consumer of TempDB, right? So these are some of your, these are the, the part of the majority and the big consumers of TempDB. And what I want to do is like we talked about in the agenda, spend most of our time in t temporary tables, table variables, and the version store. So we really understand how those affect and work in TempDB. <laughs>